One thing I've noticed over the years in reading so many scripts is screenwriters who manage to uh, anchor their story, ground their story in the protagonist's point of view are, in a sense, the most effective scripts. Because the first primary job of screenwriter is to keep us turning pages, obviously, to hold our interest. The only sin is to be boring, right? The second job, which I think is sometimes neglected, is we've got to empathize with the protagonist. We have to feel that we are them. And this is sometimes neglected in screenwriting. And the best scripts, the scripts that I see, use whatever techniques they can to get us to absolutely identify with the protagonist. That means looking at every scene you write from that character's point of view. Now that doesn't mean subjective camera and literally as if, you know, I am a camera. It means thinking about the scene from that character's perspective. What's the most important thing in the scene from their point of view? And if in scene after scene I come into every scene with the character, if I'm never outside of that character, but within them looking at things, subliminally that identification starts to happen and I get more and more involved. So something I'd highly recommend is think about how you're writing the narrative in your scenes and are you being sure that we are either figuratively or literally in the main character's point of view. And obviously you can switch point of view and there are other ways of doing that, but generally speaking, if you're working with one central protagonist, everything you can do to put us with them is uh, to the advantage of the read. The ways a screenwriter does presents character on the page that pulls us in is to answer the question, what does the character want? What's in their way? Why should we care? And that means your orientation as a writer is to answer those questions, whether consciously or unconsciously, uh, within the scene. So you may physically have a character enter a room so that your narrative begins, Susan walks into the room, she looks, she sees Bob, etc. That's correct. But Susan needs to have a reason for being in that scene. Kurt Vonnegut famously said, every character needs to want something in a scene, even if it's just a glass of water. So again, you as the writer, knowing what the character is after, knowing what the obstacle might be, the other character, whatever situation, and having some sense, whether unconsciously at first or consciously when you revise, of what is the emotional pull. What's the emotion that this character is going to hit that's going to resonate with the reader of the script? So if you can identify what they want, what is the emotion that confronting this obstacle is going to create, then again, we are more inclined to be with that character as they will. It also helps to uh, be really clear in your tags when you're introducing the character. Some people fall into the trap of they say, uh, he's blonde, he's 18, he's a jock. That tells me nothing, really. Jock, okay, but what I want to hear is, uh, what's the famous one from Silence of the Lambs? His face was a road map of places none of us could bear to visit. <laughs> Which, and for years after that screenplay, after Silence of the Lambs came out, I would see versions of this in scripts. With, His face was a pizza that could not be delivered, or, you know. But the idea being, what are you speaking to that's essential to the character? And if that tag is vivid, we, like anybody walking into a room, first impressions, we will retain that and we'll carry that forward. So it's also a matter of really knowing your character and being able to tap into what is the essential characteristic so that then when they enter a room in another scene, we can anticipate and we go, oh boy, she walks in and meets this guy, look out. So it's really a matter of just knowing your character and inhabiting your character's psychic space. And then, let me mention one more thing, controversial. For many years, in most screenwriting courses and most instructors, they teach this gospel of show, don't tell, 
and you can only express what's physically apparent on the screen. And they want every writer to write like a Raymond Carver, let's say, and just strip it down to this almost clinical level. I don't believe in that. And I have to report to you that every A-list writer in Hollywood, Oscar-winning screenwriters, they break that rule on a daily basis. Speaking to your character's feelings and thoughts in the narrative is absolutely permissible and also a good idea. Like anything, you don't want to abuse it. I can say, if I say, Billy walks into the room, he doesn't know whether to believe what Susan is saying or not. That's good. That's helpful. That's a thought. It's a feeling. But an actor can play that. And it helps the actor. It helps the director. It helps the reader understand. If I say, Billy sees Susan, he's reminded of his second cousin who went to the wedding back in 1975, and she, that time they fell in the, well, obviously, you know, you can't go there. So it's a matter of just, again, find what is the essence of what's going on in the scene, and don't be afraid to speak to thoughts and feelings when they are useful and when they can clarify what's going on in the dynamics of a scene. I, for one, really advocate do that don't abuse it, but use that, because that can really help. Yeah, you want to use this in the context of a scene. Obviously, information that's extraneous to the scene or exists outside of the frame, no, I agree. Don't put that on the page. But to tell me something about the way a character is responding and feeling or thinking in a given moment can really be key uh, to generating the tension, generating the interest, the intrigue, and clarifying what's going on for the character. And clarity is king. That's what we want.